Good evening everyone. Welcome to Heavenly Harvest Homestead. My name is Ken and today we're making Tabasco sauce. So let's roll. Alright, first thing before we start working with hot peppers, put on gloves because if you get these in your eyes, and everybody know, everybody should know by now that I not only wear glasses, but I wear contacts. And there ain't nothing worse than getting pepper juice in your eyeball trying to put contacts in. So, and I gotta, I'm wearing contacts to church tomorrow. And that's the thing about peppers. You can wash and wash and wash and wash and wash. You'll think you got it all off because there's no more smell. And then you go to touch your eyeball, and you remember, oh my goodness, I just prosper, prosper. Processed Tabasco peppers. <laughs> Alright, so this is what they're going to look like after I get them all peeled off. They got stems on them right now. So I'm going to pick all the stems off. And then we're going to uh, make them into a mash. And start the fermentation process. So I'm not going to put you through the boring part of me picking all these things off. But I'll show you how they look when they're done. All right, so now I got most of these stems picked off. But while I'm finishing, whoo, that's gonna hurt. And while I start finishing the rest of these, I want to tell you a little about Tabasco peppers. All right, so I was born in Louisiana, in New Iberia, the home of Tabasco sauce. And the McElhaney family uh, has been making tobacco sauce for over, I think over a hundred years, if I remember right. And the reason why they chose this is because it has such a, such a unique flavor from other peppers. And they grow very prolifically in the heat. And Louisiana, Louisiana certainly has no shortage of that. But one little thing that most people don't know about, if you're not from Louisiana, is the history behind a little bit of the towns that are there. One particular town in Louisiana is called Baton Rouge, and it's named, its namesake is taken from the people who harvested Tabasco peppers. So Baton Rouge is Cajun for red stick. And why that is is because in order to prop, pick the proper pepper when it was just at the right spot, they had a red stick that the harvester would, harvesters would go around with and they would match the pepper up and pick them at their prime. Not too red, not too orange, but just right. Just like these are. Now I didn't use a red stick for this particular these because I've seen them for a long time and same thing for most of the guys who pick Tabasco peps commercially they uh, they don't usually carry a stick either. But that's how the town Baton Rouge got its name. It's from the basically picking Tabasco peppers. So I haven't been back home for Louisiana for several years. I, I uh, you know, don't go there very often just because uh, you know, my last time I was there I buried my grandmother. So you know, that's one thing that I, you know, that was the last thing that I really did in Louisiana. And I really uh, appreciated my grandmother. She was a godly woman. Uh, she loved the Lord. And she loved to cook. And one thing that I learned from her is there's never a time when you love the Lord enough. What I mean by that is there's never a time when you need to love God. You need to love Him all the time. Because without Him, we have nothing. Not these peppers, not this house. You know, we don't even have life without Him. And one other thing about that is 
being from Louisiana, Tabasco sauce became a staple, especially in her house. There probably wasn't anything that we ever ate that didn't have Tabasco sauce on it. Now, not cooked in it, but as the seasoning, because um, not everybody likes hot. So I think that's why Tabasco, Tabasco sauce has become such a popular item. And my grandfather, he kind of had a, uh, well, he passed away from congenital, congen <clears throat> congenital heart, heart fail, failure, um, but he had diabetes. And so, you know, with that, he had some health problems and he didn't, he couldn't eat too much pepper. And that's how my mama Steli would say it was, you know, don't have no much pepper. And she just called it pepper. You know, not particularly any particular pepper, but I don't recall ever seeing her grow these on her farm. Uh, I've, you know, I've been with, you know, on her, on her, in her garden for, you know, many years. And I never really saw her make, make her own Tabasco sauce. Now, I do can, I can say that she can make some killer chow chow. And I wished I had learned the recipe from her. One thing about my grandmother is she never used any measuring spoons. Everything was done from taste. She'd put, you know, she would put, uh, cook up a meal. Everything, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And it would taste so awesome. In fact, I cannot remember her cooking anything ever that I said, oh, I don't like that. So I just want to share that with, with you. My grandmother, God bless her soul, passed away at 103. And I can tell that God was truly in her heart because when she passed, she had a smile on her face. And I'll never forget, I didn't get to see her when she passed, but that's what everybody, my uncle said when he came in and found her, she had a smile on her face. And I can only imagine when you see Jesus again, you'll probably have a smile, a smile on your face too. So that's just a little bit about my grandmother. I wanted to share that with you as I was getting ready to make my Tabasco sauce. So now I've got all of them in, that I just did in the colander. I also had processed some previously. I put these in the freezer. Now, one thing about this is, and I've, I've uh, learned from some other people, I already kind of knew this, but if you freeze anything, it basically kills natural bacteria that's in these. So I have, these still have not been frozen, so they're going to be my ones for natural bacteria. Now, if you ever have fro all frozen peppers and you put them in a jar to ferment, you've got to add your own natural ingredients as far as uh, something to ferment them with, um, some kind of a natural bacteria. And when I'm saying bacteria, I'm not talking about nothing nasty. Um, basically, yeast is a bacteria for some, you know. So yeast breaks down uh, peppers and turns them into sugars. And actually, it breaks down everything. That's how they make uh, moonshine. That's how they make all alcohol. Is taking yeast and mixing with these. So we're going to make a a mash. What I mean by that is we're going to chop all these peppers up into fine pieces. We're going to stuff them in a jar. We're going to add some salt, and the salt you add is by volume. So when I weigh the peppers, we're going to do about two to three percent. Of that weight added to with salt and then you put them in the jar and you let them do their thing for two or three maybe four weeks now when they make Tabasco sauce commercially they put them in big oak drums they put all the peppers in there they add the salt and they let them ferment in these big big oak drums for several weeks and they have they go and take the lid off and they'll stir them and you know get you know get the air out and then they'll close them back up 
And it's not until they get to that right spot of when they've truly broken down. So if I fill, I'm going to use this jar. Let's say I fill this jar completely up with peppers. By the time they're done, it's going to be down about almost halfway because it's, they're going to shrink down as they begin to ferment. And one of the things about fermenting is you have to have a lid that does not tighten down tight. You don't want to seal it down, otherwise you're going to make a big bomb. So you have to have something that you can vent this with, but not leave, let anything get inside. So I'm utilizing an old Duke's mayonnaise lid on this jar, and I'm going to use it, and I'm going to you know, check it every now and again, probably every other day, letting the gas out. And you can tell when it's gassing, because when you, when you do it, you can smell the pepper and the CO2 coming out of the jar. All right, so let me get these washed up, and then we'll uh, grind them up, put them in the jar, I'll show you how, how I weigh them up and all that, and then we'll be right back with you. All right, so this is the biggest one I got. Um, I could use my Ninja, but I also make smoothies out of it, and I don't want to contaminate my smoothie mix with Tabasco peppers. So my daughter was going to throw, throw this out, so I was like, oh, no, 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 no. So I confiscated it from her. And I think it's going to be great for doing this. Uh, so, uh, put them in. you only put too many at first. Put a little bit in here. We're going to get these all ground up and make them happy. Smells good. <laughs> Man. This little bucket's gonna hold and we have to put put it in the jar and then keep on grinding. Let's see. This will probably be the last batch I need. <laughs> peppers in there that I want to get chopped up. Alright, let's get it in the jar. 
protector. I'm going to use the same one I used for, for canning. That way I don't spill it on the counter. That smells hot already. Tabasco paste. <laughs> I wish I had grown more than just one plant this year. That's all I had was just that one plant. Asked, asked Beth yesterday, asked, why do I always just only grow one pepper plant? Hot pepper plant. Uh, this year I only did one, one jalapeno, and one Tabasco, and one Serrano. Knowing that I was going to make salsa, but I didn't really plan on Tabasco sauce until I saw how well it was doing. So, that's what changed my mind about doing Tabasco sauce. Let's get this guy set back on there, and we'll go ahead and knock the rest of these out. and chopped up here. Now don't worry about the seeds and all that because uh, after we get it fermented we're going to run it through a food mill and get all the uh, all the chunkies out and the seeds and all that. We'll be left with just the, just the sauce. And then I'm going to tell you what you can do with the mash because we don't want to waste it. You know it's still useful. So when we get to that point, I'll show you what, what to do with it, because just telling you it just doesn't make, doesn't make all much sense. So. All right, well, let me get this uh, all packed in here, and then uh, we'll put the salt in, and then I'll uh, get it closed up.
All right, now we got the peppers in here. Now we need to just add the salt. So since we had 16 ounces of pepper, we need to add two to three percent of its volume in salt. So when I did the calculations, it came out to 13 grams of salt. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this over to grams. Grams. And I use peak Himalayan salt for this. You can use whatever kind of salt you prefer. I just prefer the pink Himalayan salt. Uh, we switched over to this a few, uh, about a year ago, I guess it was, and haven't ever looked back, so. Thirteen on the button, look at that. That in there. Give that a stir. Now you could add the salt at the same time you uh, do the when you crush the peppers up, but because it doesn't really matter, you're getting the salt in there one way or another. And what salt does, just like it does everything else, it's going to pull. It's going to start the action of the fermentation. Um, so. You don't put the vinegar in just yet. That's one of the last steps before you uh, actually pour it out in the jar. So basically, what you're gonna do with the vinegar is that's how you uh, that's how you dilute it down to the strength you want it to be is by the vinegar. So that's the gist of what's in Tabasco sauce is just salt, vinegar, and peppers. So that's that. So now we just gotta sit and wait. I'm going to put the lid on here. Now I'm not going to screw it down like I said. I'm not going to put it on super tight. I'm going to leave it a little bit loose so that it can it can do its thing. And I'm going to set it into a. It don't got to be in a dark area. I just don't want it in real bright sunlight where the sun can hit it because that'll could cause the bacteria to die. All right. Oh man. Whew. Tickling my nose. So we'll get back with you uh, in in a couple of weeks when uh, we check this out and see how it's doing. All right, thanks. Hey everyone, welcome back to Heavenly Harvest Homestead. All right, today I'm going to be showing you my, what I've done with my Tabasco sauce. So uh, I want to show you this. <clears throat> I recorded the other day when I put the vinegar in and I guess my battery died. So I just want to show you what I've done. All right, I've I fermented this. It's been four weeks since since I put it in the jar. And what I did is I filled it up three quarters of the way, give it a lot of head space just in case it expands. It's been in here for about a week now. So the next part I'm going to do is we're going to run this through the food mill, get all the seeds and the peels out, drain the juice which is the actual sauce and then we're going to uh, add more vinegar to get it to consist consistency and the flavor so let me uh, set up my camera for that and I'll show you what to do all right this is the food meal so if you've never seen one of these what it does is when you turn the crank it takes it turns the food smashes it down through this screen right here and they have different sizes screens. Oops, different size screens. Um, yeah, this is the medium one. There's a finer one for doing much smaller seeds or smaller stuff. And you got a big one for. Uh, I don't know what you'd want to use this for. Why would you want so much this stuff coming through? But anyway, um, I'm using the medium screen. Um, I don't know, I might switch to the small screen because the seeds in, my, in the in Tabasco peppers is kind of small. So let me quickly switch over right quick. I'll show you how to do this. It's pretty easy. I've never seen one of these. Basically, it's got a, a lock 
on both sides here. You just push down on one side and you twist it out from underneath the, the latch. Well, that's going to be a pill on me. Of course, it'll be a pill on me today. It just went together nice and clean and now it's going to act all squirrely on me. There it goes. All right, and the end here's the other hide. There's, well, this is the turning point. Let me turn this camera a little bit so I can get a little bit better picture on this. All right. Oops, went the wrong direction. There we go. All right, so this is the turning point. So what this does is it latches inside the bowl and the crank turns. Now, if you've never used one of these before, the screens come... They're concave, so put the the pointed point up. So like I said I'm gonna change it to the smaller screen. All right, so you lay this inside, and then there's a little spot on the end right here. This fits through the top of it to hold it in place. Now I've used this. I use this a lot um, during uh, when I'm making my salsa. Uh, try to keep the tomato skins out. Oh, before. Uh, I learned from Jess over at Root, Root and Refuge how to uh, easily peel tomatoes. And I'm going to show you that in just a minute, what she showed me, and I'll show you in case you don't know. Anyway, so we got it all put back together again. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to dump my sauce, or the what's the contents in this jar, into here. And we're going to turn it through this food meal and separate the seeds and the peels from the sauce. So what I should have running out the bottom is just the juice. All right, so we turn this. It's going to squeeze all the, the yummy juice out. If it starts getting bound up, you'll start seeing some stuff build up in the center right here. Just turn the crank backwards, it'll free it from the, the spot. And then you'll be able to continue to sift these out. Let me give me a little spoon so I can try to free up the holes. It's like they're clogging up with seeds. Not letting the juice flow through. Like I said, these seeds are really small. And by the way, this is not the end of these seeds and peels. Uh, I'll show you what I'm going to do with these. It's got a, they have a, another usefulness for these. That's pretty awesome. Um, basically, you take the remainders of this, put them into ice cubes trays, freeze them, and then take them out and put them in a little bag. And whenever you need some spice for a chili or a soup or something, just take the cube out, <clears throat> drop it in the pot with the, your stuff, Natural seasoning without too much. All right, let me get these all ground up and then I'll get back with you in just a second. All right, so I've got it all sufficiently spun out and show you the sauce. So it's in this bowl. So I'm going to let this drip a little bit. I don't want to get this on the counter. Now, be careful. Do not get this on your hands without gloves. So you can take the gloves off because if you touch your face with this, it's going to be a bad day. So let me uh, get this all cleaned up, put it back in the jar so I can scoop it out into trays, and then I'll show you what's the next step. All right, next thing I'm going to do is um, you can do two different kinds. Um, a lot of people I've been watching use uh, white wine vinegar. But I'm going to stick to my traditions of my Louisiana family and the traditions of the Tabasco family and just use regular white vinegar. So what you do is, it's already had some in the jar, but you add a little bit, just to add a little bit at a time and test 
taste it to get find the right heat consistency. All right, so I added about a cup there. I'm just going to run my toothpick through here and taste it. All right, so that's a little bit too spicy still. Always keep a sugar drink on handy, on hand whenever you do this. You'll start noticing also, it'll start taking on that nice orangey Tabasco color too as you as you uh, add the vinegar. Perfect. That's the perfect spot right there. All right, so you want a little bit of you know, a little bit of that tart. You don't want the heat to knock you out. Well, this is the way I, I usually prepare it. You don't want the heat to knock you out right away. You want it to be a slow burn into where it sl slowly builds. If you don't put enough vinegar in, you're going to feel a real quick burst of heat. And it's just going to intensely get, get wor worse and worse. So, and this is what happens when you mess with peppers. You get a you get a, a sneezy nose. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do now. I got to put it in bottles, get it all bottled up. But this is shelf stable now. Once the peppers ferment and you get it all uh, spun out, actually, when just the fermentation makes it now shelf shelf stable, means that I don't have to put this in the refrigerator. I can put it right up on the shelf because I'm not going to pressure uh, this. I'm not going to put any not water can it or anything. I'm just going to put it in little bottles just like the Tabasco people do. And then set it in the shelf there and it'll be ready whenever it's ready to be used. And that's one thing a lot of people don't understand about Tabasco sauce and most other uh, pepper sauces. They don't have to be refrigerated because they're fermented. right? If you don't ferment the peppers though, however, you have to refrigerate them because... They, with fermentation, it, the bad bacteria kills anything that might be harmful. So that's what doing fermentation actually does. Is how come you can do this with uh, cold slaw to make uh, sauerkraut and things like that. Now I hope this was informative and um, you enjoyed this. But before I go, I want to show you uh, some of the bottling process and some of my tomatoes I'm putting up, show you how I do it. So let me get over there right fast, and then we'll uh, close this up. All right, now let's get this poured up into bottles. <clears throat> I ordered this off of Amazon. These little bottles, they come with uh, the little pour caps, the lids, and they also come with a, uh, the little sealer tops. So you can seal it up and make it nice, look nice and pretty, and it comes with labels also. So you can uh, put a label on your bottle and write what it is. So I thought it was pretty neat. It was only like 14 bucks for all this stuff. So not too bad. And I'll put that in our Amazon store when we get it opened up. So in case you want to ever get some of these, you'll know where to find it. Alright, so it also comes with this little uh, silicone funnel, which makes this filling up process very easy. Alright, so you can see where it comes up to the bottle right here. Do You don't want to go too high up because you don't want the, the liquid to get up inside the, the funnel. Let's see if I can do this without making a big old mess. I've never poured it out of, you know what, I'm going to get a, uh, well I make a big giant mess and death kills me. Let's see if I've got a glass one in here. Alright, well, I guess we're going to have a sacrificial plastic one. Well, let me pour this in here so I can pour it in there a lot easier. It's made exactly four cups of sauce. That's pretty cool. That was not planned. It was quite by accident.
Ooh. Man, it smells so good. Might have planned this. I mean, absolutely perfect. Couldn't have done this again if I tried. I've never uh, got exactly the right amount. All right, let's hope this fills this one all the way up. Can be close. Can be close. Oh, a little bit left. All right, let's see if I get any that aren't quite as full. I think this one right here could probably use a little more. Whoa! Oh, man. See, that's why I didn't want to do that, because invariably you always, because these necks are so, th so thin, invariably you're going to end up pouring it over. Go ahead and finish topping off these bottles. All right, got them all full. All right, so now let's put the caps on. So put these little clear ones on first, just like they make, just like you buy at the store. And these are completely rewashable and reusable. So just take this, snap it on there. So. on your lid. least Alright, so there we go. Six jars of homemade Tabasco sauce. Alright, let me show you a little bit of my tomato operation. So I've got these Roma tomatoes. I've been putting these up uh, all season. Um, they're still coming. So i got about, uh, let's see, about four more plants left. They've still got about probably 20 or 30 tomatoes on them. If I can keep the hornworms off of them. We should be good to go. All right, so Jess showed showed me this, or showed us this on her her uh, YouTube uh, channel. So if you don't know, if you haven't seen Ref, Roots and Refuge and haven't watched them, go over there and look. They got some great videos. They show some great techniques on doing homesteads and great raised beds. So basically, what you do, this is a tool I got one of them at uh, one of them trade shows. You know, where they go and you watch the guy cut up a bunch of vegetables and then they give you things for free. This thing is awesome. It's designed for making, like, decorative things out of tomatoes. But all I do is make it, use it for coring. I'll just take it and set it in the middle, spin it around, pops the core out. And then on the bottom, all you can do is cut a small X. That, and then pop it in the thing. Now, what this, 
what this, how this works is you freeze the tomatoes. And you don't have to freeze them for any particular length of time. You just freeze them for a, you know, just enough to get them frozen. And then when they thaw, the peels just come right off. Pretty, uh, pretty awesome. You know, because I've, that's one thing I've battled with over the years of trying to peel tomatoes. That's one of the reasons why I bought that food mill in the first place was, you know, I got frustrated with the blanch and peel and, you know, the sing it a song and peel and all those things that you, you're, everybody tells you to do to peel tomatoes and it never works. Works for about the first five and then after that, you know, you either get a bunch of mush or you invariably have peels in your stuff and I don't like peels in my salsa and that's what we're going to be making with the rest of these. So I just want to show you that and give uh, Jess some love because uh, I think this is one of the coolest things I've ever learned um, on YouTube. So so once again I want to thank you for joining us on the homestead. Whew, still got pepper in the nose. But what I want to ask you, if you really enjoyed this video, please hit subscribe and share it with other people because a lot of people don't know how hot sauce is made and they may not know even how to make hot sauce. And I just want to tell you, thank you for all my subscribers. We have, I think we're up to 42 now, which is pretty awesome considering we've only been on here for just a, about a month or so. But... I want to thank you all who have subscribed, and thanks for all the comments, too. I really appreciate everything that you guys do for us. So also, ring that notification bell because so you can see when we put new videos up. But until then, I want to tell you that God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. God bless you. I love you.